Hi and welcome to another episode of Essential Lightroom. In this video we're going to be taking a look at how to create this effect that I've got on screen. Now this is a kind of desaturated, high intensity, high contrast image that works great where you've got images with tons and tons of detail. So for this example you can see we've got the hair and the fur really does make that stand out and give some real punch to it. So I'm going to take you through step by step how to recreate this effect. I'm also giving you the free preset, the link is in the description below so you can get one click and get to pretty much this point in your image. As always, stick around to the end because there's a couple of extra steps I'm going to take you through that'll make sure you get the most from the image that you apply this preset to. Anyway, let's take a look at how to do all of this right now. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is just reset our image back to where it was when we started. So we're going to click on reset and there you go. This is the image we're starting out with. So as always, I'm going to take you through step by step through the develop module and show you what I've done and why I've done it. So let's click on the basics panel to start off with and the beginning thing that we're going to do is we're going to go through and we're going to deal with the color before we worry about anything else. So I'm going to come down, I'm going to grab the saturation slide, I'm going to drop that down until we get a nice desaturated look. Around about that kind of point works really, really well. I'm going to leave the vibrancy as it is, but I want to start pulling that detail out. So first things first, let's grab that clarity slider and give that a good tug to the right hand side. Up to around 65 to 70 should be pretty good somewhere on that kind of range and you see that helps pull the detail out in there now if you find you start to get some strange color effects or some straight artifacting then just pull the clarity slider back a little bit until you get the kind of thing that you're looking for that works well with the image that you're developing next up i'm going to grab the contrast slider and we're going to give that a good push over to the right hand side to get some nice contrast in there that looks pretty good i'm kind of liking that Next up, let's just tweak this. Now, this is one of those things that's going to depend upon the image that you're working with, but the preset's going to give you a good starting point, and you can use these settings with a sort of as, a, as an idea of what I'm doing. So what I want to do is I want to get some nice stark contrast in there. We've got some nice whites in the snow around the area and also the, the highlights in the eyes and the snow on the dog's mouth. So what we're going to do is going to grab these highlights and we're going to give those a good bump up to the right-hand side to really push those up and give some nice contrast in there to the highlights. Next up, we're going to grab the shadows. We're going to open those up a little bit. So we're going to take those up about plus 15, plus 20, somewhere in that kind of ballpark figure. And the same with the whites. Like I say, for this image, I really want to make those whites pop and stand out. So we're going to grab those, take those over. Somewhere around that kind of region is looking pretty good. So I'm kind of liking that. I'm going to leave the blacks where they are because I'm going to tweak those with the tone curve next. But if you wanted to, you can adjust the temperature or the tint to really give this the kind of color that you want. And I suggest coming back later on, taking a look at that once we've gone through and done some of the other alterations. So let's move on now to the tone curve and see what we can do with that to really start to help this image really look a little bit more interesting. Now for me, the tone curve is one of those tools in Lightroom and the curves adjustment inside Photoshop that really help make an image pop and stand out. And you can get really creative with this and just using this like I've done in some of my other Photoshop videos, you can take an image from bland to fantastic with no other tools or tweaks. Now we've got different ways of working with this and for this example we're going to be working in the point curve mode so we want to make sure we can adjust the curves line. If you're not in this mode just use this little toggle switch on the right hand side of the panel and I like to switch between the two different modes. Now we could if we wanted to go in and adjust this on the red, green or blue individual channels but for this example we're going to keep this simple. I just want to deal with the tone in the image not adjust the color in there so we're going to leave it on the RGB what I'm going to do now is going to add a couple of points in there at the intersecting sections. So we're going to add three additional points that gives us five points we can start to work with. Now if you're not familiar with the tone curve and how it works, this is simply the tonal information inside your image. So right up at the top we've got the, the white point in the image, right down the bottom on the left hand side we've got the black point in the image. Then we've got the shadows, the midpoint and the highlights. So we can adjust that tonal information inside the image just by manipulating these points. So the first thing I want to do, I want to grab the blacks and I want to crush them. Now, this is a very popular effect, the kind of thing on Instagram is all over the place. and It's very easy to do. We've covered this quite a few times and all I need to do is come down to the black point, grab that point and drag it up and you'll see that any blacks in the image will now start to drop out. And if you take a look at the histogram at the top, you can see our black point is now no longer existent. So if I pull that back down, you'll see our histogram adjusts and we start to go back over to that black part of the image. 
until we get sort of close to the end. There's not a lot of black blacks in this particular image where we manipulated it, but you get the idea. So by grabbing this and dragging it up, you can see our blacks become crushed and we start to get dark grays in there as opposed to being black. Now you may find you want to tweak this a little bit. What I tend to find works really well is just a tiny midpoint boost and I'm talking a small amount because if you go too far, you get this kind of crazy posterized effect. If you drag it down, you kind of get this re really weird washed out effect. And you see you sort of just lose all real detail in there. But a nice little bump in the mid-tone just helps balance everything out. And we can, if we want to, adjust this ever so slightly as well on the highlights. And I'm going to give it a little tweak. And that's it. So let's take a look at before. And take a look at after. Nothing drastic, just adds a little bit of character to the image. So now let's take a look at how we can deal with enhancing the colors that we want in this image by using the HSL sliders. Okay, so we're now going to adjust the HSL or the hue saturation and luminance in this image. And the great thing about this is we can control the colors in one of two ways. We can either directly select it by using the little target tool, and we can click, go onto our image, and adjust the colors through that or you can directly influence it by using the sliders. Now you've got a lot of control with this. We can adjust the hue of the colors. We can shift those into different color ranges. We can adjust the amount of color through saturation, or we can adjust the luminance or the brightness kind of values of the image itself. So I want to sort of just pull out a little bit of the detail in the dog, in the brown we've got there without influencing any other colors. And that's very quick and easy to do using this panel. Now for this particular manipulation, I'm going to adjust the saturation because I want to put a bit more color back into that. And the reds and oranges are the colors that are kind of kind of influence this brown in his fur. So let's grab the red saturation and push that over a little bit. Take that up to around mid 50. Now these kind of adjustments, they're not going to be in your face. They're pretty subtle. Do the same thing then with the orange, but just a little bit less in this, around the sort of mid-30s. And you can see now we start to get a bit of warmth into those browns. Let's take a look at it before and take a look at it after. So you can see we just get a little bit of warmth in the dog's face to kind of draw your attention to that. Now this is one of those things that this is going to be image specific. You may have something that has blues in it or greens in it, and they're the colors you kind of want to pick out. Obviously, you would adjust those independently based upon your image. Now the next thing I want to do is just adjust the luminance slightly. I want to darken the reds down a little bit. So we're going to drag that down to a minus about, about sort of that kind of point looks pretty good. And with the orange, we're going to bump this up. We want to lighten the orange colors to sort of make it a little less rich in the brown. So around about that kind of point, maybe a little bit more. Yeah, that looks pretty good. So let's take a look before and after. So now the dog's face just looks a little bit more punchy and just sort of draws your attention into it just a little bit better. Okay, we're nearly at the end of this, this manipulation now. We've got a couple more steps to go and then we're pretty much done. So I want to bring some additional color into this image. I want to apply some sort of toning to the highlights and the shadows just to kind of give this a little bit of character. Now we can do that through using the split toning section. Now this is something that really is pretty powerful and you can change the overall look and feel of your image just by using these simple sliders. So what we're going to do is we're going to apply some color into the highlight area and into the shadow area and then we're going to control the amount of mix between those so we can either take it more towards the highlight color or more towards the shadow color. So what I want to do is I want to apply the sort of orange and teal look to this. Now this is something I've got a dedicated video on and the link will be in the description and I'll put a little pop up in the corner just so you can check that video out. And if you do like the orange and teal look, then we've got a great orange and teal preset pack. This again will be linked in the sort of description below and in the top corner. So check that out. It's a really good way of getting one or two clicks and getting great looking images. Anyway, so first thing I want to do is I want to apply a little bit of orange into the highlights. So I'm going to drag that over to the sort of orange range. Around about there should be pretty good. And we'll just apply a little bit of saturation. Now, I don't want this to be overpowering. So we're only going to put a touch of this in there. Okay, there we go. And the next thing I want to do now is apply the teal, which we're going to put that into the shadow area. So we're going to take that up to the sort of around about that kind of color. So we're getting the orangey blues in there. So that's kind of teal color. And then we're going to take the saturation. And again, we're going to keep this pretty minimal probably around 8 to 10, somewhere around there. So you can see the shadows start to take on this slight green tint, and the overall image has a kind of green tint, which isn't what I want. So what we're going to do is we can use the balance slider to take this more over towards the highlights. 
just drag that over and you'll see we now start to reduce the amount of green that's in there, the amount of teal that's in there, but it's going to have that slight underlying tint to it. So let's take a look at before and take a look at after. So you can see it's nothing drastic, but it just adds that little bit of warmth to the overall image. Now we could, if we wanted to, leave it at that point. And what I would suggest is adjust the image based upon the colors that you've got in there, like we've done in the previous section, either using the split tone in to enhance it or the HSL so you can go through and fine tune and tweak the colors in there. Now, obviously, if you want to take this one step further, there's a few other things we could do. Obviously, you want to go in and sharpen the image before you sort of print this out to get maximum detail in there, which works really, really well where you've got this high contrast, high detail image where you've bumped the clarity up. If you wanted to, you could also go in and add some vignetting in there. Now, this doesn't look particularly great if we do that on this image because of the snow. And I want to keep the snow sort of to be quite pure because the dog itself is the kind of focal point. So I don't need that effect on there but you could do it based upon the image you want so one final thing i want to do is i'm going to come down to effects and i'm just going to grab the dehaze slider and we're going to take that over to the right hand side to dehaze a little bit now you can use dehaze to get rid of haze in an image but you can also use it to really help bump contrast up in there and make your blacks just a little bit more intense now i don't want to go too far with that so we can just test this before and after so you can see now this has more of an impact in the detail behind I'm probably a little too strong on this. I'm going to pull that back to maybe plus 10. So you look before and after. Just a subtle effect to it. But that's pretty much all I wanted to do to it. So let's take a look at what this looked like before and after. And we can see how much we've changed about this image. So this was our starting point. Already a pretty cute looking image. But I think what we've done to it just makes it that little bit more interesting, has a kind of character to it and a good image style, kind of thing you see very popular on Instagram. Anyway, that's all there is to this video. As always, the link is in the description below so you can go and grab the preset to get you 90% of the way through to get in this effect. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button to be kept up to date with all the new content we add every single week. If you have any comments, questions or feedback on this video or anything else covered on the channel, please pop those in the comment section below. Until next time, take care.